Hey everybody, this is Bander Tyrell again, and I am coming to you today to do a video on how to create two-sided HDRI or EXR images, uh, specifically for use inside of Adobe's Substance Painter. Now, the reason this is necessary is when you're creating objects for Second Life and you try to texture them in Substance Painter, the default HDRI images have a one-sided light source. And what that means is when you place the object inside of Substance Painter, it illuminates it using these HDRI or EXR images as the light source. But since they're one-sided, one side of your object is going to be bright and the opposite side is going to be dark. So when you import that into Second Life, it looks weird to have an object, especially if the object sits away from a wall, where one side's dark and the rest are, or one side's dark and one side's light, and the rest is kind of in between. You want it to be as close as possible, you want it to be illuminated all the way around so that it looks correct sitting around inside of the middle of a, a, an open space. Now if you're going to place it against the wall and permanently have it against the wall, it doesn't really matter. You can use one-sided HDRIs or panoramas. <clears throat> and it's kind of up to you. So you, you know what you're building and you know how it's going to be used. So if you're okay with one side being dark and one side being light, you can leave it that way. In fact, I did that with some of the walls that I made where I knew I wanted one side to be outside of the building and one side to be on the interior. So I actually used a one-sided HDRI and I rotated my model so that the light hit it on the side directly so one side was bright and one side was dark. But for most things, uh, at least most of the things that I make, I want it to be uniformly lit all the way around. So uh, that doesn't work. So you need two-sided uh, HDRI images and they don't come that way. So you have to take an existing HDRI or EXR and convert it to be two-sided. So a little bit uh, of what's the difference between an HDRI and an EXR, it's really not much. Well, I think the reason is one's proprietary. And so you, I noticed in Photoshop now you can't save as HDR anymore. It's gone. Um, so you have to use the EXR format. It, it's just a format difference. One's open source and the other one is uh, proprietary. So we will be using EXRs. So what I did was I went to uh, HDRI Haven or Polyhaven and I downloaded a bunch of free HDRI images. I'm try I was trying to do something that looks like it's inside of a cave or in a, a cavern or just kind of dark for Halloween. So I wanted to go grab some and then convert them into two-sided. So I thought, hey, while I'm doing that, why don't I make a video? So let's get started. I've already done a few of them as practice, but let's get started. So we're going to open one of our XR, EXR files. So let's do this one. It's called Fireplace 4K. And when we open it, we'll pick um, the default here, which is as alpha channel. So there's your HDRI. Uh, it's a light source and it's one-sided. So we want to turn, turn this into a two-sided light source and the way to do that, it's a, it's a fairly simple process but there's several steps that have to be executed just right. So the first thing we want to do is we want to apply a grid to this so that we can see, oh by the way, give credit where credit is due. I actually watched this in a video from a guy named Jack from Chia Mia SL and I'll post a link to his video in the bottom. Uh, his browser was in French so it wasn't necessarily the easiest to follow for for uh, native English speakers and his video is a couple years old so some things have changed since he made it and I had to figure out how to do a couple things and since I went and took the time to figure it out I thought I would share it too so I'm kind of updating his video with some of the newer changes that have taken place especially the thing about not being able to save his HDRI that's kind of important all right so um, we have it in here let's put some guidelines on here so that we can actually easily cut it in half and to do that you go up to view guides and new guide layout when you do that this panel is going to pop up um, in his video he said to use four columns and one row which gives you these blue lines in here um, you don't really have to use four you can use two but I already had four in here so I'm just going to go with that um, but also you want zero or nothing in the gutter because what that does is if you have a gutter it puts two lines for every one line with a gap between them and so it's no longer centered in the image and so you can't cut the image in half so make sure the gutters are zero and that you have an even number of columns so that you get a line down the middle because the line down the middle is what's going to let you cut it in half right 
So this is fine, so let's go with that. And we're going to start with the left half, and so we want to grab the marquee tool, and we're just going to cut this in half by grabbing this whole left half. And you want to make sure that the background image is selected when you do this so that you actually cut that image. Um, otherwise you get a whole bunch of empty pixels. All right, so we want a copy of this, and we're going to do, and we want to put it in a new layer. So there's a command you can do by right-clicking. It's called layer via copy. So it copies it and puts it in a new layer. And there's our new layer with the copy in the left half. So that's the first step. The next step is on that new layer, so make sure you click on it if it's not highlighted already. We're going to add a layer mask, and that's this button down here at the bottom of the layer panel that looks like a square uh, rectangular box with a circle in it. Click that to add a layer mask. And when you do this, new little box appears. And that box should have, uh, looks like it's highlighted because there's like selections around it. So if it's not, just click on it. And then we're going to add a gradient, a simple gradient. And this is one of the things that um, my version of Photoshop didn't have gradient in the menu bar on the left-hand side over there. So I had to pick a different workspace. So I'll show you which one I picked. So this is, you go to Window, Workspace, and then I picked Painting, and then there was a gradient option. And some of the other workspaces that I normally work with, that option wasn't there. So I thought I'd point that out to you too in case you can't find it. Okay, so just left click on the gradient tool. Oh, so sorry, before we do that, we need to move this. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. So all we did was cut it, but it's still in the, it's still where it was. So if you, you can tell that because in this little image here, the left has the photographic content and the right is empty. So I know I haven't moved it yet. So what you wanna do is you wanna left click on the left side and drag it to the right side. And you're working in the new layer that we created. Okay, now you can tell in your small little thumbnail, the left half is empty and the photo content is in the right side. So we know, we, we know we've dragged it. That's in case you forget where you are, you can tell, okay? You also, there's no gradient in here, so you know you haven't done a gradient yet. All right, so now we're gonna do the gradient. So you click on gradient and you're gonna go to the right-hand side, which is where we moved the, the image to, and just drag this across from the center to the outside. Okay. So we have now added a gradient into our layer mask. And then we want to turn this layer off because we're done with it for right now. We don't need it. We're going to go back to our original layer. And now we're going to do the opposite of what we just did. So we're going to grab the marquee tool. We're going to cut or select first. We don't cut it. We'll select the right half of this image. And then we're going to make a copy into a new layer by doing right click, layer via copy. So now we have a new layer with our content in the right-hand side. And remember, we want to move it to the, the opposite side. So we're going to go up to the Move tool and drag this over to the left. Now we're going to add a layer mask to this content in this layer. So there's no layer mask here, so we're going to add it to this one. Now it's there, so we want to make sure it's active by clicking in it. Grab the Gradient tool, and we're going to go from the center out. So we're going to go from the middle to the left this time. Okay, so now we've added a layer gradient mask on this content. And to finish up, we just turn the other layer back on, and now we have it completed. But we need to check it, so let's go up to view and turn our guide off by going to guides and clear guides. So now you can see the finished image is now a two-sided light source. It's a two-sided panorama. And what we're going to do is we're gonna, well, now we're going to save it. And the way to save in the current version of Photoshop, and this is September of 2022, and I'm using the CC version. Um, if you go to Save As, there aren't many options. You can save it as a Photoshop file, you can save it as a large document format, or as a TIFF. Well, you can't save it as an EXR or an HDR. So what are we going to do? Well, we have to find a different way of doing it. And fortunately, it's pretty straightforward. So right underneath Save As, there's another option called Save a Copy. That's what you want to do. So you save a copy, and 
Now it's going to let us save in OpenEXR, plus a whole bunch of other formats, but that's the one we want. And let's, uh, let's save it into a folder that I've got called HDRI. And it's going to name it Fireplace 4K Copy. Well, I don't want to call it that. I want to call it Fireplace 4K Two-Sided. And then just uh, hit Save. And then it's going to come up and ask you what kind of compression do you want to use. I, I don't know what the right thing to do is, so I just pick none. Okay. So we are done. We have created our two-sided panorama or two-sided HDR or EXR. Now, to use it, we're going to go into Adobe Substance Painter, if I can get my mouse to cooperate. Let's go to the Substance Painter, which is right here, and I'll show you what we're going to do with it. We have to import it. So to import this into Substance Painter so you can use it, you're going to go to File, Import Resources, and then on the Import Resources panel, you're going to click the button at the top that says Add Resources. Then you're going to select the files that we just created, which is this one called Fireplace 4K two-sided. I think I'm gonna, I, I did this one earlier and I don't think I've imported it so I'm going to go ahead and import it too while we're at it. Uh, then it's going to ask you what kind of files are these uh, and where, where should it put them. So these are both environment files. So you click on undefined and then pick environment. Then down here is where do you want to put them. So current session means it's going to import them but when we close Substance Painter, it's going to forget they ever existed, and that's not good. We want to use these over and over again. So you want to put them... Uh, if you did project, then it'll include them in this project file, but if you create a new project, they won't be there. So that might be useful for some things that you know I'm only going to do it for this one project, right? But for these things, I'm using them over and over again, so we're going to put them in the library. And then just click Import. And there they are. So you can actually select them from your display settings. So if you click on display settings and go down to environment map, you'll find them in here. Uh, there's fireplace 4K 270. So I just changed my light source to use that HDRI or EXR image, and it's two-sided. The other one was called Draken something, wasn't it? There is Draken. Draken Fields Cellar 4K 270. You know, I left the word copy in there. Um, I kind of like that one more. So let's keep it there, and then we're going to go down and we're going to bake our mesh maps with that new lighting source so that it gets, it gets on there correctly. I've already baked this once, so it's already set up to do it. I don't have to show you how to do that. It's in another video. Then just click Bake, and it's going to go through and create all, create all of our mesh maps using that light source. And uh, it's pretty quick. It's not a super complicated model. I'm working on something for Halloween, so I wanted to do like a, a gothic altar. So that's kind of the feel I was going for. And I think it turned out pretty well. This is, this is how it's lit with that two-sided light. So you'll notice that this side and this side are pretty close to the same as is this one. And then the side that's pretty skinny down there, you'll notice it's about the same lighting. And even the top is pretty close, so I'm pleased with this, uh, the outcome of this lighting. So, I <laughs> just moved my OBS window. I hope it didn't screw up the video. Anyway, so I'm um, because I'm looking at the wrong screen. So that's uh, that's how you do it. You create your two-sided HDRI in Photoshop, and then you import that into Substance Painter, and then you're able to use it to do your work with. So anyway, if you have any questions, feel free to comment or put them in the comments or contact me in Second Life. It's Bandor Tyrell. Uh, you can reach me at my any one of my different businesses there. We just launched Antiquity. It's a specializing in doing mesh and things f for the medieval fantasy genre. So we're doing a lot of these mesh builds and we're making furniture, buildings, building kits and all different kinds of stuff. So you can check me out there or the other places where you can find me. I'm not hard to find. Uh, so feel free to hit me up with any questions. If you have comments or uh, 
feel free to leave them if you want to reach out to me directly you can as well um, feel free to share this video with your friends um, I'm not trying to make any money off this I'm just trying to do things to help people because I think it's important that we all make Second Life successful and that we make it as good as we possibly can so just trying to help we'll talk to you guys later have fun can't find the stop button there it is bye